Star Wars Outlaws lets us play the first ever truly open world Star Wars game, brimming with different planets, environments, cultures and iconic locations. The world we have seen so far looks like the ultimate playground for fans and seems rich with lore. Our senior staff writer Heather Wald had the opportunity to visit Massive Studio in Malmo, Sweden, where she got to hear about their approach to make this open world a reality. It's ambitious, exciting, and certainly makes stepping into the shoes of scoundrel K Vess so enticing. Early in development, the team at Massive Entertainment immediately recognised that in order to truly deliver an open world, they would have to let us navigate through one of the key ingredients that makes Star Wars, well, Star Wars, space. Lots and lots of space. Game director Matthias Carlsen said that in the early stages of development, they instantly realised that the true Star Wars open world experience needs to go beyond planet surfaces. They, the planets, are completely central to the variety, but so is space. Space is an equally important part of the Star Wars world and experience, so surrounding these planets are orbital regions, space regions. And we can therefore, as part of this space experience, put one of the most iconic moments literally at your fingertips. Hyperdriving, hyper jumping between these different regions at will. When you arrive, this is not an authored roller coaster ride where we tell you when to go to space and how to go through it. It's real time space flight. We only got a small taste of the space flight, but it's definitely left us eager to see more. We can't wait to see just how much freedom we're going to have in these so called space regions. After saying punch it chewy and flying through space, you're going to have to take a pit stop and land on one of the five planets that Star Wars Outlaws has to offer. Associate World Director Chloe Hamoud highlighted the Star Wars universe is home to more than a million worlds, so the first task the team had was to decide which of those to bring to the scoundrel fantasy we'll be taking part in. The team used the concept art of Ralph McQuarrie, who worked with George Lucas on the original trilogy for inspiration. Art and World director Benedict Podlesnig outlined the rules of design that the team followed, or as he describes it, the cookbook recipe for world building. You need strong silhouettes, the three second rule, which is how long it should take you to understand what you see, and the underworldly feel that the team wanted to capture. When we started working on Star Wars Outlaws, it became really clear to us that we wanted to have a mix of familiar planets, but also brand new creations to provide not only diverse environments for players, but also a sense of visual progression, Hamoud says. To leverage the underworld feeling, we needed to have the right balance between human spaces, but also natural spaces. We needed planets to have at least one city to support this underworld feeling and opportunities, Hamoud adds. These spaces needed to be large enough to encourage exploration, to be able to take your speeder, but also for traversal and on-foot exploration to support a wide range of open world activities. We also wanted to capture the scoundrel fantasy because this is core to our game, and each planet needed to accommodate the presence of criminal syndicates, but also the Imperials because the Empire at this time is at its peak. Hamoud also explained that they worked closely with the narrative team, putting in a lot of consideration into what kind of journey Outlaws was trying to tell, which in turn affected the number of planets needed to explore Kay's scoundrel story. The open world will be made of five very distinct handcrafted worlds to offer new experiences, which we'll be able to navigate to and from as we jump from cities to landscapes and space in our trailblazer ship. These five planets are a mixture of familiar and unfamiliar. Tatooine will be very familiar to both casual and hardcore fans alike. However, Tashara is a new creation made in collaboration with Lucasfilm. We'll also see some other planets that have made appearances in other Star Wars media, such as the frozen world of Kijimi that appeared in Star Wars Rise of the Skywalker, and the opening location of Kantanika, which is from Star Wars The Last Jedi. If you're a massive Star Wars fan, you might also be familiar with the jungle planet of Akiva, which has only so far appeared in the novel Aftermath. The game itself will be set in between the events of The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi, but Massive took the opportunity to explore George Lucas's inspirations and go deeper than the movies ever went to bring all of these locations to life. 
we asked ourselves, how do you create worlds that feel authentic to Star Wars, that resonate with fans? Because it has such a strong community and we wanted to acknowledge that, but also bring something new and fresh to this franchise, says Hamoud. So it was critical for us to not be too self-referential, and not only look at the movies and the original trilogy, but we also wanted to do the exercise of going deeper and really ask ourselves what inspired George Lucas when he created all of these worlds, these characters and these locations. Hamoud spoke at length about how George Lucas was greatly inspired by the Wild West and Spaghetti Westerns, which brought about the frontier-style design of Tatooine. Taking this fun tidbit into mind, Massive decided to make some new locations on the planet. There is a new Wayfar station, which includes loads of frontier-style iconography, and will also act as a rendezvous point for traders and farmers. There is also a sheriff's office, which we first saw in the latest showing of Outlaws at Ubisoft Forward this year. The icy Kajimi was originally inspired by samurai movies such as The Hidden Fortress, and will set the scene for the introduction of a new crime syndicate known as the Ashiga clan. The clan was a collaboration between Massive and Lucasfilm, and was heavily influenced by feudal Japan and the creative impact that samurai movies had on Lucas. With a wealth of different inspirations ultimately leading to the makeup of the open world setting, we're curious to see how Massive brings it all together. We are still yet to experience how varied the Outer Rim will actually be in Star Wars Outlaws, or get a true sense of the amount of freedom we'll have as we go from place to place directly. After all, the prospect of getting lost in the Star Wars universe, delving into the dangerous side of the galaxy, and trying to make it through unscathed? Well, that's more than an exciting one. It's going to be exciting to see how Massive brings all of these locations to life, and see if they truly deliver on the varied open world experience that the team have set out to create. What are you looking forward to seeing though? Which planet do you think you'll spend the most time on? We can't wait to explore the galaxy with our new scoundrel friends when Star Wars Outlaws is released on August 30th on PC, PS5, Xbox Series X and Xbox Series S.